Hi, my name is Eric Messimore. I'm a physician, pharmacologist, and university professor, and I believe in moving useful mental health information out of libraries and textbooks and into the hands of people who could use it. Today I'm going to respond to a question that came in through the comments section on one of the videos in this channel. And the question has to do with akathisia, which is a condition of restlessness, which is most commonly a side effect from medications used to treat psychosis or schizophrenia, though it can also be a side effect of other kinds of medications. There are quite a few solutions to the problem of akathisia. So if you have akathisia, know of somebody who has akathisia or are a prescribing clinician who wants to learn more about it or a mental health therapist who works with people who might take these kinds of medications, I hope you'll stick around and see the full explanation in the slides that follow. Well, let's start off with basic introduction to the term akathisia. It's a medical term. Like many medical terms, it's derived from foreign root words, in this case, Greek. The root words translate roughly into not able to sit down or not able to be still. And that describes the essence of akathisia. It's a symptom which consists of a feeling of restlessness, which may also translate into being restless. So it can be both a feeling and a set of actions. In terms of the feeling aspect of akathisia, many people describe it as restless. A lot of people that I know that have experienced akathisia tell me that there's not really a good English word to describe exactly what it feels like. Uh, quite often people will talk about it as like anxious or like irritabil irritability or unwell or uneasy or just bad or icky. Quite often, if you ask a person with akathisia if it feels like they wanna crawl out of their skin, they will say, yeah, that's how it is. So a variety of different kinds of feelings generally around the sense of restlessness, uncomfortable, and feeling like you need to move, which brings us to the what it looks like. Classic textbook explanations of akathisia describe it as pacing. In the classic textbook descriptions, people will write that people with akathisia will walk back and forth, pace seemingly nonstop in some cases. But it doesn't always look like that. And a lot of times akathisia can be simply an internal feeling without a whole lot of other movements, which I think leads to a problem whereby a lot of people who prescribe medicines don't recognize akathisia because they're taught to look for pacing. So I think it's important. I, I, I like the question that came up because it's a very overlooked side effect and it's sad because it's one that we can treat pretty easily. But coming back to what it looks like in motion, people can fidget. They uh, quite often will sit in their chair for a little bit and want to stand up again. People, when they're standing, can shift their weight back and forth from one leg to the other. They may pump their leg or shake their knee up and down. Um, and of course, pacing or walking. So it certainly can involve a lot of restless movements, but it doesn't have to. And I think that's a big, important distinction to make about akathisia which goes on to this slide, why akathisia is very frequently missed. And um, hopefully this video will do a little bit to solve that problem. What causes it? In almost all cases, akathisia is, is a medication side effect, but sometimes, relatively rare, but sometimes it can be a primary symptom of a neurological disease, of the neurological diseases that akathisia can be a symptom of Parkinson's disease. Parkinson's disease is probably the most common. Like I said, it's a medication side effect and lots of medications can cause it. Essentially, any medication used to treat psychosis or schizophrenia, which is to say a medication which reduces the strength of dopamine chemical signals in the brain, can cause akathisia for some people. Some of the classic and still frequently used older generation of nausea vomiting treatments are also drugs that interfere or reduce the strength of dopamine signals. And any of those drugs 
can absolutely cause akathisia. In fact, many journal articles are written from emergency room doctors describing ways to address the problem of akathisia that comes from the prescription of these commonly used anti-vomiting medicines. And little known fact, but if you go and read the fine print of the, of the prescribing information that the FDA puts out for every drug on the U.S. market, most of those antidepressant descriptions are going to talk about akathisia or restlessness as a side effect risk. This is this one is really commonly overlooked and just it shouldn't be because it can happen. These days, if somebody is on an antidepressant and starts to get restless, there's a great risk that the prescriber is going to interpret that as mania and diagnose them as bipolar. And that's not necessarily the case. It could just be restlessness or akathisia, which is, as I said, a well-described side effect. A question also comes up very frequently, is akathisia reversible? Um, yes, it, the simple answer is yes. People who take a medicine and experience akathisia as a side effect, not infrequently will find that the akathisia fades if over time. So if a person experiences akathisia of a mild to moderate intensity and wants to continue the medicine because it may have early benefits or they want to give it a full trial, then it may indeed fade away within a few weeks. The other meaning of is akathisia reversible? I think when people ask this question, they mean if I get akathisia, is it going to stick around even after the causing factor like the medicine that caused it goes away? And no, once the cause is identified and addressed, akathisia will go away. It's not a permanent condition. And importantly, akathisia is a problem that can be solved. So um, hopefully the following will give you good information for talking to doctors about getting solutions. Before I go on to solutions, I wanna talk about this thing, tardive akathisia. Tardive means late onset, and it can be the case that a person has taken a medicine for months or years and is doing well with it. And then after months or years, they may develop akathisia, late onset akathisia. It's a thing. So if you know somebody, if that happens to you or you know somebody who has it, that's, it's got a name. Okay, moving on to treatments, many options. We can reduce the dose of medicine, switch to different medicine, or use a host of different side effect treatments. And we'll talk about each one of these things. Well, I'm not going to talk about I don't have a slide for reducing medication dose. Suffice it to say, akathisia can be relieved in many cases if the dose of the medication is lowered. It can also be relieved if a person switches from a medicine that has a relatively higher risk of akathisia to one with a lower or very low risk. So the very low risk category, clozapine, aloperidone, lumetepirone, pivofranserin, and ketiapine, um, putting this here so that people can understand that there is a sort of a hierarchy from more likely to less likely to much less likely in terms of likelihood to cause. So there is that option. Then we could either, we, we can use medicines to solve akathisia problem when it develops. So why might we do this? If a person is on a medicine and is having good results from the medicine, but the akathisia is a side effect that they don't want to deal with, but they still want to stay on the medicine, then we could use a side effect treatment like this medicine propranolol. Another situation in which we might use medicines like side effect treatment medicines is when we're planning to do a dose reduction or to do a medication switch. But in the meantime, we have akathisia, which is uncomfortable to experience, and we want to try to get rid of it quickly. Then we can use a medicine, and many of the medicines that I'm going to talk about here have pretty good track records of being highly successful and effective. The first of the medication solutions is propranolol. It was developed as a blood pressure treatment. It works by blocking the action of a neurotransmitter chemical called norepinephrine. And norepinephrine is, I, I think of it like adrenaline, and that's how this um, special protein, the beta receptor, beta adrenergic receptor, got its name. Adrenergic is where is related to the adrenaline 
word. This high nerd part about the beta receptor, because propranolol belongs to a family of medicine called beta blockers, and you're likely to hear a doctor or a pharmacist or people in the medical profession talk about beta blockers, and this is the beta that they're talking about. Okay, back to propranolol. Although it was designed to treat blood pressure, I always say medicines don't know what they're supposed to do. We identify them as useful for one thing, and then it turns out they do a whole bunch of other things. Uh, propranolol is interesting because it has a lot of other things that it does in the world of psychiatry. It has a lot of other uses besides just treating blood pressure, and among them, treating akathisia. Textbooks of psychiatry recommend propranolol as one of the first line options. So it's got strong endorsement from the tradition of psychiatric medicine. Downsides of propranolol is that as a blood pressure medicine, it can lower blood pressure and pulse. So if a person already has a low blood pressure or a low pulse, it might not be a great idea. And very important, propranolol and beta blockers in general have the ability to worsen asthma or provoke asthma. So if you have a history of asthma, um, make sure you tell your doctor that you have that because propranolol might be a bit risky. Um, but there's many options to choose from. Another option is a family of medicine. The family name is benzodiazepine, and there are many members, so I put plural benzodiazepines in the slide. All of these medicines, although different chemicals, they all do the same thing, and that is to make stronger the chemical signal of a neurotransmitter called GABA. This is also a textbook option. So most textbooks of, psycho of psychiatry or psychopharmacology recommend a benzodiazepine type of medicine. Most commonly, those books will recommend lorazepam, several other uh, benzodiazepine drugs, the ones that some have some brand recognition. Um, the benzodiazepine medications share a lot in common with alcohol, actually. So the side effect profile and the risk profile of the benzodiazepines is roughly similar to alcohol. That includes being tired or sedated, being clumsy or lacking fine motor coordination, having possibly some impaired judgment. These tend to happen at higher doses, which hopefully won't be used in treatment of akathisia. And some people are kind of genetically predisposed to have excessive reward from these medicines, so they do have an addiction potential. So those are the downsides, but nonetheless, they're one of the textbook options. Not in most textbooks, but published in medical journals is a drug called ciproheptadine. This is a uh, complicated medicine. It does many things. Um, it was designed as a cold remedy or as an antihistamine, so it blocks histamine signals. It blocks acetylcholine signals, which might have some benefit for, for akathisia. Most likely why ciprotidine works is because it interferes or reduces the strength of serotonin at certain kinds of, in certain kinds of pathways in the brain. Um, in my practice, I've seen superheptidine be successful at treating akathisia that did not respond at all to propranolol or to lorazepam. So I think, in my, in my experience, this is a highly effective treatment for akathisia. Downsides of superheptidine are sedation and appetite stimulation. So if it's taken over the long term, that can translate into weight gain. Um, so that's that option. Next, we have a drug called mirtazapine. This is an antidepressant medication. It goes under the brand name Remeron. And it's also a complicated drug. It does many different chemical actions. Among them is that modifying the serotonin signal, which probably is why it relieves akathisia, though it does also appear to boost the dopamine signal, and that might have some role as well. So it's been studied. It seems to be successful. However, it does cause sedation. It causes appetite stimulation. And I've seen people who take Remeron or Mertentazepine and they get akathisia from it. So it's not a one-size-fits-all solution. And um, it's an antidepressant. And antidepressants in general have the potential to cause or provoke mania in people that are vulnerable to bipolar disorder. Um, another option that I think attracts a lot of people because it's natural sounding is, is vitamin B6, which is also known as pyridoxine. Vitamin B6 to treat akathisia is used at pretty high doses. 
Normally in our diet, we get one, two, maybe three milligrams of vitamin B6 through foods. When vitamin B6 is used as an akathisia treatment, it's given at 300 or 600 milligrams twice a day. So really massive amount of vitamin. Data suggest that it can do as well as propranolol at reducing akathisia, which is caused by antipsychotic medications. There are other data that say that high dose vitamin B6 over long periods of time might cause some people to have damage to some of the nerve endings in their body. So um, specifically sensory nerves, a condition called sensory neuropathy. I would be a little bit leery of super high doses of vitamin B6. Some people like it because it's a vitamin and there you have that option. Um, there is a category, a broad category of medicine called anticholinergic. They're called anticholinergic because they interfere with the action of the neurochemical signal from a neurotransmitter called acetylcholine. When you block acetylcholine actions, this is a solution for neurological side effects of antipsychotic medications. We'll talk about those in another video sometime. It also appears to treat the restlessness or akathisia side effects. So that's another option to explore. The most commonly used anticholinergic medicine in psychiatry is a drug called benzotropine, which goes under the brand name uh, Cogentin. Downsides of anticholinergic drugs are that they can worsen short, they can impair or worsen short-term memory, they can cause dry mouth, they can cause urinary retention or constipation. Um, in people that are prone to bipolar disorder, there is some evidence to say that it could provoke mania or make mood unstable. And um, use of anticholinergic medications is associated with increasing the risk of another side effect that we really want to avoid called tardive dyskinesia. I'm not personally a giant fan of the anticholinergic medications for almost anything, and I'm not a fan of them for the treatment of akathisia, but it's out there in practice and knowledge as an option, and I'm here to give options. Again, I'm not here to make decisions for anybody. I'm just reporting on information. You should talk with your doctor, um, your healthcare professional, about what options are best for your particular situation. Finally, Benadryl. Benadryl is the brand name for a drug whose generic name is called diphenhydramine. It's primarily an antihistamine, which means that it interferes with the action of the histamine chemical signal. And it has a little bit of action as, a acetyl, as, an, as an acetylcholine interfering drug, which probably, to the extent that diphenhydramine slash Benadryl is helpful for akathisia, it's because of the, of the acetylcholine action. We, it works uh, for some people, apparently. Um, like cogentin slash benzotropine, Benadryl is very commonly used to treat neurological side effects of antipsychotic medications, and it's over the counter, so some it's widely available and pretty cheap. So those are some pluses for that. I, people who've taken Benadryl before should understand that it causes sedation, and antihistamine drugs can stimulate appetite. So long-term use comes with those risks as well. And that's in terms of medication solutions for urgent, immediate relief of akathisia. Those are most of the options that I can think of that are worth mentioning. And just to summarize, um, again, I, I'm appreciative of the question because it reminds me that this is a really common side effect. Sadly, it's a side effect which is often missed. It shouldn't be missed because it's very uncomfortable and it's very treatable. So I, um, if you take medicines or if you know somebody who does, do please bring up words like restlessness, um, antsy, wanting to move around, wanting to crawl out of one's skin. Those are words which will, should alert a prescribing clinician to the possibility of akathisia. And if you're a prescribing clinician, do inquire about these symptoms. And if you hear somebody talking about like agitated, anxious, um, uneasy, or they're paradoxically seeming to get worse rather than better, it might be because akathisia in the internal felt sense of the symptom is at play. Important to ask because it's easy to treat and uh, to get relief from. There's a lot of options in the treatment of psychosis. There's a lot of options in dealing with medication side effect. So I hope this has been helpful. 
uh, for anybody listening. If you have comments, if you have your own questions, please put them into the comment box below. If you found value to this, please let me know. Um, give me a thumbs up and a like and all that stuff. I will take on more questions and post more videos in the future. Take care.